Welcome to Alex G's Aquarium, everybody. Today I want to talk about the RO DI unit or reverse osmosis deionization filter that I keep for the 1600 gallon system. Now, if you're not familiar with these filters, a lot of times they're used in aquariums, especially coral reef aquariums, to pre filter your tap water and try to eliminate all of the elements that are in it and give you as close to 100% pure water as you can get. But this is a seven stage RO DI unit runs through a few stages and I'll talk about each of them very briefly but the main thing to understand with these units is that if you're planning to keep a saltwater reef aquarium there's a good chance that this type of water filtration system can help your aquarium sometimes it's not necessary and I have used aquariums with tap water in the past but I find with a coral reef aquarium it can be a lot easier to manage nutrients and the elements that are getting introduced into your aquarium system if you take the time and use an RODI unit. Now this unit here has been upgraded and I'll talk a little bit about why I upgraded it as we get into this RODI unit. Now the first thing to consider with these units is that they aren't all so large. They can come in very compact sizes to very large industrial units that are far bigger than this. But the first thing I had to look at when I installed the RODI unit in my home was my water pressure coming in. Now I live in the suburbs of Chicago and my water pressure here in Illinois is not that great. It's around 40 psi or 40 pounds per square inch. That might seem a lot, but a RODI unit can perform better when the psi is around 80. In order to boost that pressure for the RODI process, I added what they call a booster pump, which is located right here. Now this booster pump takes the water in line and then it just puts a lot more pressure onto the unit. This in turn flows it into the unit at a higher pressure where it's read on this pressure gauge here. Now I can control the pressure of this RODI unit by controlling a bypass valve. And I'm not going to get into talking about the bypass valve in this video, but I wanna talk in general about what this unit does. Now, when your water comes out of your tap, it will have a TDS or a total dissolved solids reading. Now your tap water can have all kinds of added elements to it, depending on where you live in the country or the world, along with the actual water source that you have. One of the tools that many aquarists use in the reef hobby is a TDS meter. Now this is a handheld device. It measures the total dissolved solids in the water. And my tap water has a TDS of over 300 here. And that's pretty high, and I've never gotten this water tested to see what is in that 300 TDS, but I know it's not necessarily elements I want going into my reef aquarium. I want my salt to be the only thing adding elements, or my calcium reactor in this case. When the water enters this filter, it goes through multiple stages. In my case, there's seven stages. First, it starts off with a pre-filter to just get rid of any large items in here. Now these are new cartridges, so they don't have any kind of discoloration at this time, but in a few months this will start to turn to an orange, yellow, more than likely it's removing particles of iron from the water. Then go into two different carbon blocks, which is an upgrade from my original system. This helps to remove contaminants like chlorine or anything that carbon can absorb out. Then the water travels into the RO membranes. Now, RO membranes are reverse osmosis membranes. The idea behind them is to try and remove all contaminants from the water and reject them out of a waistline while all of the purified water comes out of an affluent line that is either ready to be used or if you're going to have deionization, which is an extra step in your RODI system, you'll have deionization cartridges. They all help to remove the last pieces of TDS coming out of your water. And because I have a high TDS here in Illinois, I've learned that one DI cartridge was just simply not enough. They make a number of different DI resins. Matter of fact, I spent some time watching the special that VRS TV did on DI resins. And based on that video and some of my own research, decided to get one of the VRS triple DI savers. Now this triple DI saver is a pretty simple unit. It consists of just an inline TDS meter with three points to measure TDS as it's incoming and in the middle and then outgoing of this unit. 
And this allows you to understand whether or not this DI resin is working. Now, there's three different types of DI resin in here, which I'm not going to get into, but I'll link the video for BRS TV if you want to learn a whole lot about DI resin. The whole idea is, though, when I only had a single DI cartridge here, I was getting some TDS creep, as they call it, where TDS was getting through the DI resin and into my water storage barrels. Now, this water is what's going into my aquarium, and if you're not familiar, I have been going through some algae problems in the last few months. This is still a relatively new system, and I attributed most of the algae issues to the system just being new and only a few months old. There's likely a little bit of leaching that's gone on. And also, I didn't really have a cleanup crew that was prepared to deal with everything. I've also done some upgrades to the refugium to help with nutrient export in other places instead of allowing the algae to grow in the main displays. Thus far, that's been working, but I think I could do even more. Because I was getting a little bit of TDS into my water storage barrels, I wasn't sure what was in that because I've never had it tested. Decided to err on the side of caution and do some extra filtration with DI. That's the upgrade that I performed onto this RODI unit. I gotta say, it's been working pretty nice. I'm producing zero TDS water. I could be a little bit lazier on my part for maintenance because these cartridges last a lot longer than single ones. Also, I don't need to use my handheld TDS meter now because there's a triple TDS meter in here. Now, of course, I'll still use this one from time to time to double check the results. I actually have a couple of these TDS meters. But the important thing to remember is that filtered water can help to eliminate some problems in reef aquariums. Now, I will emphasize, I have run aquariums without these systems, and if you have a good tap water source or water source in general, you don't need to use this. But for many people, they find that this is something that's very helpful to keeping a healthy and thriving reef aquarium. That's what I wanted to cover in today's video, talking about this system and what I use for my aquarium. This is a 200 gallon per day unit, and I go through about 40 gallons of water a week, some of it being top off, some of it is used for maintenance. And I gotta say, it's been a nice workhorse. It's got dual 100 gallon per day RO membranes in it, giving me that total potential of 200 gallons per day, and it's been working out great. If you have any comments or questions about RODI systems, please go ahead and leave them down below. And I also want to hear from everybody out there as to what they're using for RODI systems. If they like them, don't like them, things that they do different, or if anyone's just using straight tap water, I'd love to hear about it as well. Of course, if you liked today's video, go ahead, give me a thumbs up, let me know that you like the content. Of course, if you want to see more on the 1600 gallon system, go ahead, hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to hit that bell notification. Thanks again for watching everybody, and I'll see you on the next video.